in some of the conversations I've been having, it's really dawned on me that not only do we not always have a process for how we process life's transition, some of us don't have a process for how we will allow ourselves to prosper. You're listening to the Redefining Wealth Podcast with me, Patrice Washington. This is the space that you come to each and every week to learn more about what it means to chase purpose, not money. And we talk about chasing purpose because as someone who's been known as a financial expert for over a decade now, here's what I truly believe. And this is as someone also informed on financial psychology. I really believe that when we are not in alignment with our purpose, it is so easy for us to just discard our priorities and therefore mismanage our personal finances. And there is a connection between our purpose and actually being able to prosper in the world and prosper in a way that is not just financial, but prosper overall. See, we believe in that, uh, that original definition of wealth, which says it's not just money and material possessions, but it's the condition of well-being. So each and every week I come here to just have different conversations with you that I hope will help you be well in all the pillars of your life, because those are the things that actually impact the finances that you say you want to respect and manage well and you want to flourish. And so if you're an OG listener or purpose chaser, you already know that. But if you're brand new here and you want to learn about the six pillars of wealth, I want to invite you to go to patricewashington.com slash the number six pillars and you'll get a cheat sheet that breaks this all down. It's all the areas of your life that impact your finances, even when you're not thinking about it. So today I want to share a really special one day event that I am hosting on December 9th. It's called the Prosper Summit. And typically I only do this for clients. So I usually do the Prosper Summit as a bonus for my purpose to platform community or clients um, for their fast action. But Based on some conversations I've been having in the DMs, I wanted to go ahead and open it up to all of you. So let's do the affirmation of the week and I'm gonna tell you why and really lay this out for you. You know, you gotta speak positivity into your life, into your day. You gotta affirm positivity. You gotta affirm abundance. You gotta affirm yourself to wealth. Today's affirmation is I deserve to be wealthy because I add value to others. I am blessed with unique abilities and talents. There is something I do better than anyone else around me with the least amount of effort. When I understand my value, I create wealth by knowing what to charge for my service or product. Selling myself short is an insult to God. He has given me the ability to produce wealth and I need to do that. When I don't maximize that potential to the fullest, I cannot turn around and expect much more else financially. So today I will determine and appreciate my value. I will be much more confident in charging what I'm worth and communicating that to the marketplace. Declare today, I deserve to be wealthy because I add value to others. Okay, so do you know last week or the week before, I believe, we talked about what's your process for processing. Sometime in one of these solo episodes, we've talked about a lot recently, but I said, what's your process for processing because Sometimes we feel paralyzed when life hands us whatever cards it hands us because we don't have a process for processing life's transitions. And every time I have one of these solo episodes, I really love, love, love the fact that you guys DM and I get to go deeper and have all of these conversations with you. And in some of the conversations I've been having, it's really dawned on me that 
not only do we not always have a process for how we process life's transition, some of us don't have a process for how we will allow ourselves to prosper. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a thing. It's a thing. So remember, process is a series or set of activities that interact to produce a result, right? And from what I experience myself with clients, with the audience at large, Many of us have been so beat up by life, by disappointments, by upsets, by betrayals and the like that we don't know how to embrace the idea of it being okay for us to prosper. Some of us have normalized toxicity. We have normalized dysfunction. We have normalized poverty. We have normalized not being compensated well for our gifts. We have normalized so much. It's even why in my Purpose to Platform program, one of the lessons is called Permission to Prosper because I know that it doesn't matter how much information, right, you download in someone. It doesn't matter how many books they read. It doesn't matter how much schooling they have. At the end of the day, you can have all of that and still struggle with the idea that you deserve more, right? You can still struggle with this idea of you being someone with your background, with your awareness of your failures, with your receipts on all the things that you haven't done well, with your acknowledgement of not coming from the best family, With all of this stuff that we carry around, it is possible to go and collect all the information we can and then absolutely do nothing with it because there's a whole nother story going on in the back of our minds, in our subconscious. And we have to be awakened to this idea that we still, despite the knowledge, the education, the certifications, the degrees, all the podcasts you've listened to, we still at some point have to flip a switch or do the work or create a process for allowing ourselves to prosper, for allowing it, for believing that we are worthy enough, we are lovable, we are smart enough, and that prosperity is our birthright. So I wanted to define prosperity for you. It's the condition of being successful or thriving, especially economic well-being. A successful, flourishing, or thriving condition, especially in financial respects. Some of us believe that we can have a good marriage or we can have a good family life, we can have a good personal life, but then that comes at the expense of us having financial fortune, good fortune, economic well being. We believe maybe wrongly that if we're going to thrive spiritually, then that means that we have to forsake the pursuit of tangible financial well-being. I have had so many conversations since the episode Permission to be Wealthy that aired a few weeks ago. If you didn't listen to it, please listen to it. It will bless you. I've had so many of those conversations that I realized that people can have so much knowledge that we, because we're all in this together, can have so much knowledge and yet still not give ourselves permission to prosper. And there's also a hesitation around the word prosperity because it's been perverted in a lot of ways. I'm not here to de- to debate about prosperity gospel If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. There's a lot of people, you know, who debate it back and forth. I'm not here to debate, deny, or co-sign any of it. But what I want to focus on today is the mindset shifts that you have to develop to give yourself permission to prosper. You think enrolling in school was the permission. It was not. You think collecting all these books and having a deep library is the permission and it's not. You may think that going to all of the conferences and taking copious notes is the permission and it's not. But I wanted to share with you 
today. This scripture in particular, it's, you know, I heard it first in one of my favorite sermons by Bishop Kenneth Ulmer from Faithful Central Bible Church back in the day. It was the New Year's Day sermon, 2006. And I'll never forget it. 2006 will always stand out as such a powerful year for me um, for several reasons. 2006, it was the first year that I could look in the mirror without cringing. When you hear me say, You know, oftentimes that I grew up feeling like I was the ugly duckling, the ugly one in my friend group, the ugly one in a lot of different ways. And people go, I can't believe that. Well, I have been addicted to achievement and accomplishment. So I had confidence somewhere. It just wasn't in my looks. And I remember 2006 being the first time I could look in the mirror and appreciate what I saw and not cringe. I remember 2006 being the first year that I made seven figures. Or or maybe the second year, but in the way that I made it. And I can remember 2006 being the year that I gave birth to my first child. I had a son before my daughter was born on July 29th, 2006. And he lived for five hours in my arms. I held him until he took his last breath. And the reason that this scripture carried me through that entire year. And I look back and I realized that redefining wealth has always been in my belly. And I want to remind you that when you think about, remind you of this, when you think about your purpose, you know, a lot of times I say, it's not that our purpose is hiding from us. Sometimes we just dismiss it or we don't quite understand it yet. And it just, it takes some time to evolve and then give ourselves the grace and space to embrace it. But 2006, January 1st, this is the scripture that changed a lot for me. It was 3 John 1 and 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, it would be 2016 before redefining wealth is even really introduced into my awareness. And in 2017, I launched this podcast and videos on YouTube and really just start shifting my language from my old brand, Real Money Answers to Redefining Wealth. But every time I think about this scripture, it could it could really be the backup foundational scripture for redefining wealth. Third John 1 and 2, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And I know that we have a very faith-based community, no matter what your faith is. It's not about the actual religion to me, but whatever your faith is, we have a very spiritual community. We have a very faith-based community here. And I find that with people like us in particular, we are so comfortable with our soul prospering, but then we struggle when it comes to career, to finance, to business in a lot of ways. Because you know, we've been indoctrinated by religion or family or culture or society or whatever to not always honor all parts of us and not always honor what we truly authentically want to do, who we want to be, how we actually want to show up because we feel like it needs to look a certain way. And as long as we're checking off those boxes to say, I'm a good Christian, I'm a good Buddhist, I'm a good Muslim, I'm a good whatever. We disregard the fact that we have the right to prosper in all things. Come on, somebody. Prosperity is our birthright. We have a right to prosper in all things, just as our soul prospers. When I first started teaching, and doing, you know, seminars and different things back in the day. I used to teach on the three levels of financial success. I originally, I think, got this concept from Barbara Stanley, who I just absolutely love. She's been on this podcast. But many years ago, before I ever met Barbara, I was familiar with her work. And I reference it, I believe, in Real Money Answers for Women. And she talks about the three levels of financial success. And if you were to look at this as a pyramid, right? The very top is what we call the higher work. 
It's like giving and helping others. The middle is the outer work. It's the earning, saving, budgeting, investment. It's the skill set. It's the busy work. And that's where a lot of us think all of our success is going to come from. But the foundation of these three, the three levels of financial success, right? The foundation on the bottom, it's the inner work of wealth. It's addressing the fears, the beliefs, and attitudes that we have towards money, towards success, towards career, towards entrepreneurship, all of those types of things, the fears, beliefs, and attitudes. It is the foundation because if that is rocky, it does not matter what savings account you choose. It doesn't matter what office complex you put yourself in. It doesn't matter what like title that you get at the job and what reserve parking spot you have. It doesn't matter if someone's giving you insider tips and tricks. There's going to be challenges. If this foundation is shaky, you can desire to do all the stuff you want to do at the top. But that's why some of you, you're enabling and crippling other people and calling it love and calling it support because you don't understand the difference between what it looks to like truly give versus just enabling because you're trying to buy love. Like all of these things are so interconnected. And I wanted to share with you today, these thoughts I was having around, again, giving yourself permission to prosper and owning and acknowledging that it's your time to prosper. Just as your soul prospers, if you're someone who's in here checking off all the Oh, I read my Bible. Oh, Patrice, my faith pillar is so good. And you are so into the fit pillar and the space pillar and the people pillar and the faith pillar, but you are still not giving yourself an opportunity to prosper in all things in the work and money pillar, then today is for you. Let's talk about some mindset shifts we need to have. Here's the first one. Here's a prosperity key I would give you. The very first key is acknowledging that your challenges with money or business have nothing to do with money or business. Your challenges with money or business have nothing to do with money or business. You know that the fit pillar here, one of the things that we always say is that your business, your finances are only going to grow to the extent you're willing to heal. And the truth is, your biggest barrier to financial success, to career success, to entrepreneurial success is your mindset. And you really need to ask yourself in this season, what beliefs are blocking my financial success? Now, let me be clear. I ask myself these questions all the time. So I don't want you to think like, oh, I already have a good job. I already, you know, make a certain dollar amount. I already have money in the bank, right? Like I'm good. You're also still alive because you're listening, which means there's always an opportunity to grow. And if we're honest with ourselves, every time we ask ourselves these questions, a new set of limiting beliefs will come up. I was just talking to one of my clients who's also in the financial space. And we talked about this limiting belief, one of hers, which is something I used to share. So I knew I was the right coach for her. She said she had a problem making offers in December because her idea is, well, people are busy with kids and Christmas and, you know, Christmas shopping. And so that wouldn't be a good time to launch. And I told her, you know what? That was one of the beliefs that was blocking my financial success for many years in my business. I had created a story wherever I got it from. I really don't remember, but I had created a story that most of my audience were parents. And that during December, all they wanted to do was spend money on their kids. Made it up. I don't know if it's because I used to be a kid who hoped that my mom was spending all her money on me. I have no idea where that came from. And reading Jen Sincero's um, book. Oh my gosh, it's one of my, my favorite books. How is it escaping me? But y'all know Jen was on the podcast. We'll link to it in the show notes. It's the green book. Oh, I'm a badass at making money. Duh. Um, <laughs> Jensen Sincero's book made me go through this exercise almost of what beliefs was blocking were blocking my financial success. And 
the one about launching in December was one of those things. And I gave myself permission to prosper, to get rid of that limiting belief, at least to allow myself to challenge it. And it was the first time that I had sold out something so quickly. And it was a high level mastermind. And every year since then, I have done some type of launch in December because my belief was completely skewed. Not only did I have more uh, single people with no children in my audience than I would have ever accounted for because I made it seem like everybody was me, <laughs> right? With a child, that wasn't true. I also learned that it was such a great season for people who are really into self-reflection, which are typically the people that I work with, people who are go-getters, people who want to like just do something different, create a new reality for themselves for the next year. They are like deeply motivated and, and inspired to always be growing and shifting. And that timeline of December and January just does it for them. Every year since then, I've pretty much launched something in December and it's always done well. And so I passed that on to my client, right? Because I believed that that is a barrier to her financial success, even though she's someone who's already financially astute. But what are those things for you? Some of the beliefs, the phrases that I hear, oh, I don't want or need money. I've heard, well, I feel like in order for me to win, so-and-so has to lose. Um, I can always start tomorrow. That belief is not even a money thing, but it definitely impacts our money, right? There's a quote that I had in my phone for some time. It said, failure occurs because of two reasons, doing things without thinking about them and thinking about things without doing them. How many of us are allowing our subconscious beliefs to keep us on autopilot? So there are things that we want to do, we've been thinking about doing, but we don't. And it could be the very thing that unlocks prosperity in our lives and takes us to the next level. And then instead of being intentional with the things that we could, should, would be doing, we're just out here living, just doing stuff. There's no intentionality. We're going with the flow and we're looking up and year after year after year, we are talking about the same financial goals. You've been talking about leaving that job for the last five years and then the pandemic comes or now the inflation, the recession, like all these things. And so we keep justifying why we're staying in a space that we have clearly outgrown. We're staying in a space that no longer serves us. We keep our good government job because mama said and grandmama said, you better keep that good government job, even though our soul is crying out to do what we are actually purposed to do. And some of us are so pumped up on social media hype about entrepreneurship when our purpose is really in a good government job or doing something else. And we're trying to force ourselves to stay in entrepreneurship. I don't know what that is for you, but this is simply my question for you. What beliefs are blocking your financial success? Because the challenges that you're experiencing with money or business are actually not about money or business. They're about your mindset. There are about your belief system. And this is foundational to financial success. Think of that pyramid, right? It's the, it's the beliefs, it's the attitude, um, it's the ideas, it's the fears that you have around these things that actually keep you stuck and unable to prosper. When I started podcasting, I had nothing. No fancy equipment, no cover art, no theme music. I just had this burning desire that I was supposed to use my purpose of helping people redefine wealth in the podcasting space. And so with some intentional planning, I launched what became the Redefining Wealth podcast in just three weeks. That was four years ago. And today the Redefining Wealth podcast has over 9 million downloads. We've interviewed everyone from celebrities to entertainers to authors and thought leaders. We've been featured everywhere from Success Magazine to Cosmopolitan and even Good Morning America. Now, why do I share all that? Because I'm not special. The truth is this started with 
leaning into my purpose, and being willing to use my voice in a powerful way. And I bet that there's something that's calling you as well, something that you need to use your voice to amplify in the marketplace. So I wanna help you do that. If you're finally ready to use your voice and launch a podcast that aligns with your purpose, I wanna invite you to check out my intentional online training, Podcast with Purpose. You can find out more details at podcastwithpatrice.com. That's podcastwithpatrice.com. Your purpose deserves to be amplified and I wanna help you do that. The second prosperity key is just remembering that operating in your purpose is your duty and responsibility to yourself, to your creator, and to those you are called to serve. Operating in your purpose is your duty and responsibility to yourself, to your creator, and to those you are called to serve. I truly believe that when we're not operating in purpose, and remember, this is not just about passion. Passion could be a hobby. It's okay to not get paid for a hobby. It's okay to have something that you do simply because it excites you, it energizes you, it pumps you up. You just love it because it's feeding your soul. But purpose is about how you take your gifts and use them to impact others. So passion is for you and purpose is for others. And when you are not clear about how to use that purpose, like outwardly, in support of others, whether you are volunteering, whether it's your full-time job, whether it's your entrepreneurial effort, it chips away at you. It creates a void that most people try to fill with buying people and buying things. So there is a connection in my book between lack of fulfillment and lack of financial discipline. And choosing to ignore what you believe your purpose is, choosing to not take the next best step on that particular path is also hampering your ability to truly set grounded priorities, right? I think that the extent of your prosperity, which is again, the condition of being successful or thriving, especially economically, is directly connected to the extent to which you pursue your purpose. The extent of your prosperity is directly connected to the extent to which you pursue your purpose. Can I tell you what's wild about that? I wrote that in 2013. I don't know who I was talking to. I don't know why it came up, but I love looking back and realizing that what I do today, I have always been purposed to do. I didn't necessarily embrace it initially. I didn't lean into it authentically because it didn't look like what other people said I could be doing. I don't know that I had any examples for one reason or another. What I do today was not in my mind of like, this is where you're going. But this is why I always say, just take the next best step. Because I wrote that in 2013, years before Redefining Wealth, years before an MBA in financial psychology, years before all of the media all of the media and the speaking engagements and all the things years before five books i think at that time i only had one book out but i was already talking about the connection between prosperity and purpose essentially i was already saying chase purpose not money if you, right like the money is only going to grow to the extent that you are willing to pursue purpose I believe we do ourselves a disservice when we keep dismissing our purpose, when we keep dismissing the work that we could be doing that genuinely has an impact on others. And the fulfillment that you get, the way that void is filled with just sheer joy and fulfillment allows us to continue to give ourselves the permission to prosper. Because now, if you have a limiting belief that says, well, in order for me to win, someone has to lose, that's shattered. Because instead of that, you can replace it with one of my favorite affirmations. I deserve to be wealthy because of the value I add to others. 
I'm wealthy when, but I'm do I'm wealthy because I'm giving value to other people, namely you, when. Now I can dismantle a lot of the limiting beliefs that we have around financial success. Now I can give myself permission to prosper because I can give myself permission to raise my rates. I can give myself permission to charge more. I can give myself permission to say no to things, opportunities, clients that no longer serve me. Everything is so connected. So that's another way that we are able to give ourselves permission to prosper. It's understanding that operating in our purpose is a duty because when we do it and we get that fulfillment, we want to chase the fulfillment, but the, the byproduct is the people that are served. I love reading testimonials. I love seeing the impact of my work. It only makes me want to serve more people. So now any excuses I would have about, well, marketing isn't my thing or this isn't my thing. Now my priorities are set. Remember, no purpose equals no priorities. Now my priorities for my business are set. Hey, if you are impacting people like this with Purpose to Platform, you got to double down on how you're going to spread the word about Purpose to Platform. As a matter of fact, I literally just took a screenshot and I'm going to give a shout out to one of my clients, Ms. Bridget Lewis. She just turned 62. Let me read to you what she says. This is why I give myself permission to prosper. This is why I give myself permission to prosper. She posted this in the Redefining Wealth Facebook group this week. This is what peace looks like at 62 years old. I am committed to my mental and physical health. When I joined the P2P spring class of April, 2022, I joined for the community. I wasn't sure what to expect. I needed more structure in my business, but I gained so much more than that. One, I paid off $5,000, no more credit cards. Two, I walked away from a two-year dead-end relationship. Three, added an additional $31,000 to my income from my idea God downloaded during my clarity coaching with our coach, uh, JJ Jones, in the group. Four, I restructured how I run my business. Five, redesigned my home interior space, peaceful. Six, I realized the physical weight I had been carrying for years was based on a past physical trauma and psychological injury. So I got into therapy. I don't carry that anymore. Seven, I started eating for my health and embracing the fit pillar. Eight, I have finished writing my second book. Nine, I exercise every day. 10, I book 10 paid speaking engagements. 11, my self-confidence is through the roof. Regardless of my weight, size, or age, I am embracing every part of me. Self-love is what Ms. Bridget says. Now, come on, somebody. If I cut off giving myself permission to prosper, I cut off the possibility of having that level of impact. Do you understand why you cannot allow yourself to keep staying in these cycles, spiraling in confusion, going back and forth, shrinking, playing small, allowing people to force you to be quiet and not use your voice and not speak up and not acknowledge your feelings and not do the things that you know that you were called to do, that you know that you have the power to do, that you know that God has put like a desire in you to do these things. And yet you keep shrinking and playing small and being like, oh, I got to keep my good government job or I got to do this or I got to do that. It's time out for that. We have to allow ourselves to operate in our purpose. It's our duty and responsibility to ourselves, to our creator and to those we are called to serve. My lack of obedience could have destroyed these 11 results that Bridget Lewis posted in that group. Me not giving myself permission to prosper, me not asking myself the difficult questions and then being radically honest, me not challenging assumptions that I made that may have served me in one season, but don't serve me in this one. 
me not doing the work, me not putting myself in spaces where I can learn and grow and be stretched, me not investing in coaching, me not putting myself in masterminds, me not doing the work. Literally, when I look at screenshot after screenshot after screenshot, DM after DM after DM, email after email after email, you know what I what I see and what I praise God for every time? None of these people required Patrice to be perfect. God did not require Patrice to be perfect. He required my obedience. He required for me to start challenging the money and business and spiritual and personal beliefs that clearly were not serving me. He required that I ask myself the questions like, what's blocking your financial success? Because you'll never get to the higher work of wealth, the ability to give and serve people the way that you want to. When that foundation is shaky, when it's faulty, when it's flimsy, you're not going to get there. Right? He required me to operate in the purpose for which he created me. I was created with purpose, for purpose, on purpose, and so were you. And making excuses about why I can't lean into that does not serve me, him, or them, the people out there that need me, that need you. So this is why giving yourself permission to prosper is real. You have to first give yourself permission. You know, we always talk about here, giving God something to bless. You got to give something to bless. You got to put something out there. You have to extend something first. Y'all know I get passionate. Okay, prosperity key number three. You can save others once you've saved yourself. And I just felt led to read that. I felt led to read about Miss Bridget because I literally just took that screenshot like an hour ago, but it ties in so well, right? I remember when Steve Harvey used to say, when I worked on the Steve Harvey show, he would always say, uh, the best thing you can do for a broke person is not become one of them. And then, oh my gosh, I can see his face right now. My friend from Power Networking. Oh my gosh, I can see his mustache, everything. George Frazier. George Frazier ended up telling me that that was actually one of his quotes, but I always heard Steve saying it like from the time I was like 19, 20 years old. And one of the things that I've added to it, because when I first heard Steve say it, I was like, oh, I mean, that sounds, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. But it makes sense, right? Because if you want to be of service, you first have to serve yourself. This is why oxygen mask, if you're going to help the person next to you before you, you do that, they tell you, put the oxygen mask on you first. You get the knowledge first. You implement it. You do the work. You do the things. You be the example, and then you can help save others. Now, one of the things that I've added for myself, I don't even think I've said this to you all or said it publicly before, but a part of what I've added to that just train of thought is the best thing I can do for broken people is not stay in my brokenness. The best thing I can do for broken people is not stay in my brokenness. That is why I'm so committed, even in the midst of going through my own trials, my own struggles, uh, you know, having my own experiences, I'm always so committed to coming back and sharing the lessons in real time, which means they're not going to be perfect. It's just what I'm exploring. It's what I'm picking apart. It's the, there's These are the questions that I'm asking myself. These are the ways that I'm reflecting because from the beginning, when you listen to original episodes of this podcast, when you go back to my YouTube videos from a few years ago, you will see that I constantly say that I want to build a community where we grow together. This has never been about Patrice being the end all be all expert up on some mountaintop looking down at everyone. This is like at any given time, any of one of us is in a valley in one of these pillars. And how are we sharing collective wisdom and how are we sharing resources and how are we using the messy middle to be a blessing to someone else's journey? I hope if nothing else, I just continue to be an example of that. I don't always want to go through <laughs> the things that I experienced to get to these lessons, but I am always willing to share. 
But I realize that the best thing that I can do for us collectively, any one of us who feel for for all in, you know, for lack of a better word, broken in some area of our life is to continue to do the work so I don't stay in my brokenness. And then that way I can share the books <laughs> that have supported me, the resources, the tools, the ideas, the journaling prompts, whatever I can to hopefully support you. Because I understand that my liberation frees you all to see liberation and possibility for yourself. That's what I believe. And that's how I live my life. And because of that, I do want to invite you all to this year's Prosper Summit. It's typically just for clients who have gone through Purpose to Platform. And I usually offer it as a bonus. But this year, I feel really led because I've been sharing so much about my own personal journey. I feel led to create a space for people who like, like if you believe that prosperity is your birthright, but you don't have a process and a plan of action to make it your reality, then I think that you could be served for this one day event. Um, because I invited not just myself, but there's three brilliant women who have all come from humble backgrounds, humble beginnings, who really humbling experiences in their personal life, whether that was with their parents of origin, the people that raised them, even their significant others. And yet they've been able to build successful businesses and platforms because they gave themselves permission to prosper. I know all of these ladies personally. I've heard their stories. I talked to them outside of the, you know, the public in the show. They're all women that I highly respect. And each one of them, embodies one of the keys that I gave you today. And so myself, my girl, Rachel Luna from Permission to Offend, you've heard me talk about her before. Um, Leah Valencia Key, actually I have her earrings on right now. Valencia Key jewelry is such a vibe. I literally have like probably eight pairs of earrings from her um, and a bracelet or two. And I'm probably going to get some ring. Anyway, it's, I mean, her stuff is amazing, but it's all made with such purpose and just her story is a vibe. You, you just got to come listen. And then Brooke Hemingway, um, who is incredible as well. She's built a multiple seven figure um, business with six children. Is it six children, Brooke? She got a lot of kids. I don't know, but her ability <laughs> To do all of this um, and remain such a present um, force in her home as well is really inspiring. And so I put together this summit just to help you get in position to take your purpose to the next level in 2023, but beyond, because I really pray it shifts some things in your mindset, um, because that's where we have to start, right? That's the foundation. It's the preparation required to really get you to lean into your intuition and learn more firsthand about how to implement the lessons that maybe you've been learning all year. Some of us have done such a great job of gathering information and yet still won't give ourselves permission to prosper because we won't implement. And we're not implementing typically because there's fears, attitudes, and beliefs that we have around what happens if we actually become successful. Yeah, if we actually become successful. So maybe you've been investing in your personal and professional development this year. Um, but you want to know that you're using it in the way that feels most aligned for you. Um, maybe, I don't know, you've been enlightened this year. You've made some shifts. You've endured a lot of transformation. I just really imagine this space and that day, um, to be something that sets you up for the next year. I know it definitely felt like that for many people who experienced it from my client community last year. Um, if you're interested, I just want to invite you to come check it out. It's prosperwithpatrice.com. It's only $97 for a full day event. And then you have access, seven day access to the replay. And it's not just about listening. We'll have virtual breakouts. We'll have reflection time, uh, dance parties. It's a very interactive event. Um, and you'll get to meet other purpose chasers because you will be in some breakout rooms where you get to discuss things. And I pray really leave giving yourself the permission to prosper and not prosper in a way that sounds 
good to other people, but one that allows your soul to prosper. Like one that is connected to who you want to be and how you want to show up in every part of your life. That is the container that we are creating. And again, I'm so grateful to Rachel, to Lee and to Brooke for joining me in those efforts. It's going to be an amazing time. And it's honestly one of the only things that you can really do with me and get, you know, get that level of access to at this price point. So $97 full day event. Come and join us. If you can't join for the entire day live, then you'll get the seven day access to the replay. But it's going to be awesome. And I just really want to see more of this community of purpose chasers. Give yourselves permission to prosper. You've given yourself permission to, you know, peep, you know, step your toes in the water. But it's really time for you to get submerged in purpose. There's so much connected to it. There's so much connected to it. And I just, I want to see all of us just live more authentically and more fully and just more out loud. And we're going to be talking about some of those things. So really all of those things, but I hope that blesses you today. Feel free to tag me, ask me any questions. Come on over, seek wisdom PCW on Instagram. Um, feel free to tag me. I hope to see you at the Prosper Summit. It's prosperwithpatrice.com to grab your ticket. It's going down Friday, December 9th. Um, it will be extraordinary and such a good time, good teaching. And I don't have to be restricted and I can say the things I want to say. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's going to be really good. I love the vulnerability and the connectivity that happens in the smaller, more intimate spaces. Um, so come and join us. It's going to be a good time. You guys, that's it for me this week. I hope you've enjoyed like all the solo episodes. I will be back to interviews next week. I had so much on my heart. And the more that I talked to you guys in DMs, it just kept piling up and piling up of things I wanted to share with you. So let me know how the solo episodes have been, how they have felt. I truly hope they've been a blessing to you. Tag me, tag me, tag me, rate and review the podcast. And of course, until next week, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment and earn more without ever feeling like you have to chase money. I'll talk to you later.